And so now let us uh, begin our worship together in the presence of our living God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We sing together song number 412, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. Again, the uh, hymns can be found on a link in the description of this video. Uh, but if you have your hymnal, it's number 412, Come Join the Dance of Trinity. Bienvenidos a todos. Again, we continue our worship series, uh, the theme, Life in the Spirit, and we hear the message today from Acts chapter 4, Spirit of Bold Encouragement. I want to say welcome to Patsy and Terry, uh, to Lori, to Nancy. Welcome to worship this morning. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Holy God, grant us your spirit of bold encouragement, trusting that where you lead us, we can follow, and that when we face difficult trials, you are with us. Through Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with the Heavenly Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday, Charlene. Just got word that it's Charlene Helgren's birthday, so happy birthday. Our reading from Scripture today is Acts chapter 4, verses 23 through 
the end of the chapter, verse 37. Um, just a reminder, this reading picks up uh, from last week's reading where Peter and John uh, went into the temple and they cured a man who was lame since his birth. And people were amazed and they proclaimed Jesus. Um, but then the temple authorities and the priests uh, didn't like that. And so they arrested him and accused him in front of a whole bunch of authorities. And our reading picks up today where now they have gotten out of prison and are returning back to their community. So Acts chapter 4, verse 23. After Peter and John were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, who made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and everything in them, it is you who said by the Holy Spirit, through our ancestor David, your servant, Why did the Gentiles rage and the peoples imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the peoples of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. And now, Lord, look at their threats, and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness, while you stretch out your hand to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite, a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas which means son of encouragement. He sold a field that belonged to him, then brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's only so much power in the power of positivity. Indeed, there is some truth to that notion, the power of positive thinking. What we focus our thoughts on can shape how we see the world around us. Focusing on the good over the bad can help us keep moving. We face adversities, frustrations, and disappointments. And we need reminders that there's more out there for us beyond the concerning situation we may find ourselves in at the moment. But there's only so much power in the power of positivity. Sometimes we view the glass as half empty. Sometimes we view the glass as half full. But either way, Often we don't know how we will ever fill the glass to the brim. When the gas tank in the car is nearly empty, 
thinking positively about gasoline or about gas mileage won't do a thing to actually put gas into the tank. It won't guarantee us that we will reach our destination. In our scripture story, Peter and John in the community of disciples need something more than the power of positive thinking. They're facing challenges they cannot overcome on their own. They're facing persecutions they cannot endure on their own. It wasn't by their own power that Peter healed a man who was lame since birth. This happened in the story we studied last Sunday. And Peter made that fact quite clear to the people who saw him heal the man in the temple that day. He told them that he didn't do the healing. It was Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified, but is risen, revealed to us as God's Messiah, the one to rule all creation. Jesus healed this man through his own spirit shared with all who trust in him. This is the power of God to save us from sin and death. Well, that message surely did resonate with many people in the crowd, as hundreds believed and joined the community of disciples. But that message also ruffled some feathers of the priests and the leaders in the temple. They arrested Peter and John, and they took the two apostles to the authorities, the rulers, the elders, the scribes, the high priest, and all who were in the high priestly family, gathered together and heard the accusations against these apostles. They were annoyed that people would turn away from their way of doing things on account of this amazing act of healing. So they asked Peter and John about their power. By what power or by what name did you do this? The same power by which they healed, the power of God in the Holy Spirit given by Jesus, once again filled them and gave them the words to answer boldly. They said, this man is standing in good health before you today by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, the Messiah, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. There is salvation in no other name under heaven by which we must be saved. It was the boldness of Peter that caught their attention. This boldness that was from beyond himself, this ordinary un and uneducated man. But while the boldness caught their attention, something else convinced them. The man who was healed stood right there next to them. There was no denying God had done a miracle. As they say, the proof is in the pudding. And all the people knew it. So the authorities had no choice but to release the apostles. So we have seen now a power that is greater than the power of positivity. Peter and John testified to the power beyond their own minds, beyond their own strength, beyond their own capacity. The power of the Holy Spirit both worked through them for healing and also spoke through them to share the good, the good news of Jesus in the midst of their trial, when they were facing persecutions, with their very lives on the line. Well, what did they do next when they returned to the rest of the community of disciples? This is where we picked up the story in our reading today. Peter and John reported to everyone the trial they faced, the persecution they endured, and the threats still looming over their heads, but also threats that were issued for anyone who dared to proclaim salvation in Jesus' name. 
But what they did next is they prayed together. And notice what they prayed for. They didn't pray for the persecutions to end. They didn't, they didn't pray for the trials to stop. They did not pray for the threats to go away. These are the things we might naturally expect. When we are facing challenges in life that have us worried and afraid, we might wish them all to just go away. We might think that if we just focus on the positive, then the negative won't happen anymore. But that's not what the community of disciples prayed for. Instead, they prayed for boldness. Boldness to speak God's word in the midst of threats and persecutions. Boldness to keep doing what the power of the Holy Spirit can do through followers of Jesus. To keep healing. To keep showing the people God's signs and wonders. To keep welcoming more and more people into the community of disciples together. The hardships are a given. The challenges in life never just stop one day. That's why the disciples pray for boldness in the midst of hardships and challenges. They prayed for boldness to face what lied ahead of them, and God answered their prayer. The place where they were gathered shook as the wind of the Holy Spirit blew through. Once again, they were filled with the Holy Spirit given a power that comes from beyond their own bodies and minds. And as requested, they spoke the word of God to people with boldness. Knowing the power of God and Jesus' gift of the Holy Spirit, there was nothing holding them back. If God is on our side, who can stand against God? If God is on our side, then what is there to fear? If God is on our side, then we can trust God is working through us. This is why the community of disciples leaned on each other so much. They knew God provided the power of the Holy Spirit through one another. Again, we hear how they lived in community together, the same theme repeating from the day of Pentecost when they first received the Holy Spirit. We hear how they had one heart and soul, the same purpose, the same focus, the same mission in life. We hear how they gave up possessing any claims to private ownership of what they had. And instead, everything they owned was held in common. And because of this, we hear how there was not a needy person among them. We hear how they received encouragement through one another, even naming one of the disciples with that very word, son of encouragement. In it together, leaning on one another, sharing God's love, and giving their testimony of the power of God doing all these signs and wonders. Sometimes, sometimes the power of positive thinking just isn't enough. Thinking positively won't make the COVID pandemic just go away. But by the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit given to us by Jesus, we get through it together. Thinking positively won't make systemic racism just go away. But by the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit given to us by Jesus, we are healers. In the awareness we raise, in the voices we amplify, in the institutional powers that we change for equality and justice. Thinking positively won't give us a strength 
greater than our own capacity to stop facing the challenges in life. But by the power of God, which is the Holy Spirit given to us by Jesus, we endure, we press on, we overcome, and we will reach our destination prepared for us since the foundation of the world by the ruler of all creation. And all along the way, as we see signs and wonders by the hand of God, we proclaim with boldness salvation in Jesus' name. Through pitfalls and setbacks, as we lean on one another and share what we have in God's love, we proclaim with boldness salvation in Jesus' name. Step by step, hand in hand, as we navigate through life's challenges together, we find encouragement in the name given to us by the community of disciples. Child of God. Beloved child of God, God is with you today and always. The same spirit by which the heavenly father raised Jesus from the dead is the very spirit given to you. Your cup is neither half empty or half full. Your cup runneth over, filled with the power of resurrection life. Amen. I want to say good morning to Melba and to Peggy. Good to be with you all. Gathered in the presence of our living God, let us now pray together for all creation, for the church, and for all who are in need. I will end each prayer petition by saying, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond. Hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of creation, since the foundation of the world, you have prepared the destination in which all creation is filled with your glorious presence. Let your signs and wonders be revealed to people in the beauty of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Here. God of all peoples, bring healing, justice, and peace to people everywhere. Bless fathers and all who serve in fatherly roles. Grant them grace to show your love and to mentor the next generations with your loving kindness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God, who gives the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, Raise up your church to proclaim your salvation with boldness in the midst of trials, persecutions, and challenges. Bind us together in one heart and soul. Grant us encouragement with the power of your presence among us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of resurrection life, we pray for those to whom death draws near, all who are suffering illness, for healthcare workers and all workers who help to sustain us and to keep us safe. We pray for those whose employment, business or finances have been affected, that your unconditional love and abundant grace will see us through to new possibilities you have prepared. Lord, in your mercy, Prayer. Send your spirit upon all who need healing in body, mind, or soul, especially everyone on Unity's prayer list, including Rita, Josefa, Daryl, 
Andy, Mary, the family and friends of Ron Tusmer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And now, beloved children of God, please offer any prayers you may have, may have at this time, spoken aloud in the silence of your hearts, or written in the comments section of our worship video. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of heaven and earth, hold us in fellowship with all your saints in light. Grant the grace of your encouragement that we may reach together the destination you have prepared in the age of resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus the Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray together in the words our Lord Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I want to say hello to Evan, worshiping with us in Texas. Good to be with you. Just a couple of ministry messages real quickly here. Um, again, please continue to call one another, uh, to check in on each other, keep each other company. Maybe go for a uh, physically distanced walked outside in the safe way together. Um, also, please let me know if you could use any assistance as the pandemic affects household uh, incomes. Email me, give me a call. And I want to say thank you to everyone who's able to continue giving offerings at this time. And then secondly, um, an idea for a new ministry that's come up. I have uh, at least one person who's interested and in looking for more. We're still looking for people to serve on a team uh, for calling church members on a like a regular schedule, uh, to check in with everyone to encourage and strengthen one another. So please let me know if you'd like to serve in this coordinated effort with other members of our church. And now let us sing our sending song together which is number 535, Hallelujah, we sing your praises. Tell to all the joyful gospel, now 
he sends us all out. Strong in faith, free of doubt. Strong in faith, free of doubt. Tell to all the joyful gospel. Alleluia, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Alleluia, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Alleluia, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. Alleluia, we sing your praises. All our hearts are filled with gladness. To those here worshiping uh, after the live stream by watching the recorded video, thank you. Our live stream worship will continue with Holy Communion as Christ gathers his church together. If you would like to receive Holy Communion this week, please message us on Facebook or send me an email. My email address is there in the description of the video. And we'll be sure to connect with you by phone, by uh, video conference, somehow to share Holy Communion live and in person. And so now, receive God's blessing for the week. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.